Hey, Fractal friends. It's uh, Austin Buddy, and I want to do a multi-part Axe 8 edit, Axe FX edit tutorial on how to use this great software tool uh, to get the sounds that you want. But there's a lot to cover. Um, it's going to have to be multiple, multiple videos. And what I want to do initially is just get some setup information to you and some get go th we're going to go through each of the drop down menu items and what they are so there won't be a sound design for a little bit in this we just want to kind of go through how this thing works uh, i'm going to assume that number one you've already installed your windows or mac driver that you need so when you start up the x8 uh, edit as you see here um, this is a blank preset, and you're going to see that um, this is what comes up if you've got nothing in the preset whatsoever. Um, and I want to walk you through conceptually what these things are. So the first thing is you're not going to hear any sound when it's like this, because this left is the input side, and over here is the output side. But right now there is no signal passing through here until you actually lay down what's called a cable. And this cable is actually a stereo cable, not a mono cable. And the way you lay down a cable is you click on a box and you click on this little output, see? Show connect, disconnect options for the jack, show input. If you connect on that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna give you a whole bunch of places to say, well, where do you wanna connect to? And it's giving you where you can connect it. I could connect it up here, 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 and here, any of these four boxes in a row or to any one of these boxes through here. If I go all the way to the end, it's gonna connect one long through and now you'll actually get dry guitar signal when you do that. So again, that's how you start up and get a signal passing from left to right, okay? Uh, you select a box and you'll see that the box is outlined in yellow. So that's really important. If the box is just in white, you're hovering over it, but it's not actually selected. So that's another thing you need to understand. So that's the cool thing is that once you connect it, it tells you, okay, what do you want to do? Now, anytime you do a box over here, it's going to automatically connect to the left. But if you do it here, for example, it's not going to automatically collect to the left, but any of these are going to automatically collect to the left. Now, the same thing is going to be true over here, any box, any block you put here is automatically going to connect to the right. So just understand that. Um, anything before that, it's not. It's going to stop right here. But so any any blocks in this column are automatically going to shunt to the uh, output, and any blocks in this column are going to automatically shunt to the input. And then this is where you'd actually put your blocks. Well, how do you pull up a block? Well click on it click on any one of these in this space and then right click and a menu is going to come up and it's going to show you a list of the kind of blocks that you can insert here so let's put an amp block and we'll go here and we'll put a cab block i'm not going to set them up or anything now but that's your basic amp and cab right there that's your tone for that now You've got an input gate over here, which is a noise gate, and it will um, default off, basically, or this low. Um, class, you've got a choice of classic or intelligent noise gate. I prefer the intelligent, but sometimes the classic is cool. And if you've got an amp that's really, really noisy, this is where you want to come in your X8 edit. You've got more options in the uh, Axe Effects, there's a whole input over here that lets you pick the kind of input. But um, basically, I usually find that threshold around 70 and ratio of around 2, 3, and I leave these alone. And that usually, for me, cuts out any noise for when I'm not playing. If you're into metal and things like that, you're going to want to play with this because this can really help with palm muting and, and chugs and chunks and things like that. So... Uh, but that's not the purpose of this particular video. So we've got this four by, I don't know how many is it, 12 probably block area where you can put things. And you've got an output over here on the far right. And this output is really powerful. This is an output mixer. And each one of these, level one, level two, level three, level four, 
corresponds to the row that is right here. So if I were to reduce level two, it's going to reduce everything in this row coming out right here by minus 5.4, uh, by 4.53 dB. So it'll also, you can pan it left and right. So uh, you'll see this more in the Axe effects where you've got a lot more power and do a lot more blocks. But in theory, for example, you could have a, let's say you've got a reverb here. And you are putting it here and you're doing the reverb all wet like it's a fader. So you're putting it 100% wet and then you're using your level like it's a fader on a studio board right here. Um, you'll hear nothing right now, but if you push this reverb to here, it's going to pass through just the reverb signal to here in the output. Normally people fool with this and control it from the level control, but in theory you can come here and in level three reduce it right here. Okay, so And you can also pan it like your Van Halen off to the far right or far left. So it's a useful thing to know this output block is here. And you can also compensate for the overall preset sound of the entire mixer block here, up or down. Now, I tend to like to set my mains in the amp block using the level control myself, but it's just another option for you to do that right here. The other thing that's really cool is you have not only this output thing, but you have something called scenes here. And this is really great if you've got a preset that's got multiple scenes in it, Maybe you're on scene one as your rhythm patch and you want to do a great solo in scene two. And we're going to talk about scenes in a little bit, but this can be where you actually raise scene two, maybe up three and a half dB. So when you click it on, it's going to get louder, but you're doing it at the output block. You're not using extra processing anywhere. You're not adding a special volume block or anything. So that's a really powerful tool. Or maybe you want your rhythm or you've got a part that's really quiet in the middle and you want to pull it back for scene three. That's where you can do this, in the output block right over here. So those are some very, very basic things. You can clearly, of course, add effects. Uh, there's some effects that are mono, like drive blocks, for example. Uh, maybe you want to add a wah-wah or something like that. You can add those in front. Now, but the thing to remember is while this cable looks like it's a single thing, it's actually a stereo cable, even though these are mono effects all the way to the amp block that right now this is all mono when you get to the cab you can make the cab a stereo cab if you like and it'll put out you know two different um, um, two different uh, uh, a left and a right you can pan them right here cab things going about in stereo but remember these are stereo cables so that's really important the other things that sometimes people do is they will um, put something maybe in parallel. Let's say we got a reverb here and we got a delay here and we got a chorus here. All right. So instead of doing them one after the other, we're doing them all simultaneously. Okay. Saying, wow, that sounds really cool. Well, there's a problem with what we've just set up here. And that is you're taking a signal here and unless you mix at least two of these into pure wet, you're actually adding gain to your overall signal. You're kind of doubling up your signal. Some people may like that. We can say there's no rules in this. But whenever you do things in parallel like this, you should have one that's the main one that's a mix. We'll say in this one it's the chorus. But your reverb should be 100% wet and your delay should be 100% wet. No dry signal. And, and this is really important, when you turn the delay off, Instead of the signal going through dry, because that's what will happen right now, you want to change it so it actually mutes the out. And there is no delay signal when you turn the delay off. Same thing here on this reverb. I've got it on through, but the reality is if I turn the reverb off for any reason, I don't want dry signal coming through here as well as the middle. You don't want to double those up. That's a mistake that people make that makes their presets louder. Again, you may like that, uh, but technically it's not right. You're adding to your own signal twice. You're combining your signal. So that's what this bypass mode is really useful for. Um, and so that's just a little bit of how you do a parallel sort of uh, delay. Now, in an Axe 8, of course, now that we've done this, we say, oh, we've got a great preset. Maybe we go over here and we save it. But 
I don't see anything on my foot switches. There's none of these that I can turn off there. Well, you kind of, on the X8, you have to come over here to this foot switch menu right here. And it brings up a, okay, what do you want to put in your foot switches? We give you one, two, three, four, five, six, eight foot switches. So maybe you want to go to this one and again, you right click and you say, you know what? I want my Wawa in number one. And I want my drive in number two. And I want my delay in number three. And I want my chorus in number four. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other thing you can do is let's say we did a scene where we went to a scene two. And maybe scene two is just a delay and a chorus. And this is what it would look like. Okay, in scene two. So you go back to that foot switch. Maybe you want to switch to that um, with, with a special switch on your foot switches. You can go up here to scene one, two and say scene one, two toggle. So every time I hit this switch, it's going to go to scene one if it's in scene two, and it's going to go to scene two if it's in scene one. So that's pretty cool. I hit my uh, X8, and you can see when I do that, the communications pause comes up. Anytime you fool with the front of your unit while you've got X8 running, Anytime you touch the front of the unit, it's going to stop what's happening in Axe 8 going, hey, somebody's playing with the front panel. We're not going to talk until that's finished. When you're finished, you can click this and it comes back. If you want to put it into that mode, you come up here and you click this little button and it'll do it for you until you click in this gray area again. That's how you can pause your Axe 8 edit. Okay? So that's a pretty good brief quick tutorial about how to get up and running. Of course, this Wawa is just on. There's an issue there. It's just on. It's not wawa like you want. So you have to go to this control. Anytime you see a knob that's got this in the center of it, this little square box. See, this one doesn't have it, and this one doesn't have it. Oh, the level has it. The balance has it. If you've got that, you were able to assign a controller to that particular parameter in it. And you do that by right-clicking on your mouse, and it brings up this Edit Modifier window. I'm going to pick my Wawa to be External 2, pedal number 2, and you have to calibrate that. That's a different process. Check your manual. So now, pedal 2 plugged into the back of my X8 will actually move that knob back and forth, and I'm going to scroll over there and do that real quick so you can see it. That's how that works. I'm going to turn this wah off. I'm going to turn this drive off. By the way, a really easy way to do this in here is you can double click it to turn it on and off, but the space bar works great to just click it on and off. So something really good there. Now what I want to do is go to specific menu items, drop down menus, and start walking through those. A couple of things. The first things you really want to do is understand these menu items. And we're just going to go through this one at a time. Uh, first, if you click here, it will tell you which version you're on. 1.84, which is the latest. Now, if you go to this Help menu, you can notice that you can always check for updates. And usually when you start up X8 Edit, it actually checks for updates and it will tell you if there is a uh, more recent version. And X8 Edit has to be updated as you change firmware. So usually Fractal releases a firmware, and within a couple of weeks, usually a week or two, uh, they will release an Axate edit that will take into account those new firmware changes. So you can also look at the release notes. Um, so this will check for updates. Right now I've got the most updated version. And you can look at the release notes. Um, if you click that, it'll pull up a menu like this, and it'll tell you what the most recent uh, updates are to it. There are all the old updates are listed here if you're interested in what's happened in the past. Um, and then you've got the about thing which is the same thing as clicking over here. So that's your help window. Now we're going to go to the settings window. And the settings window is important for when you're first starting this up. Um, there's the preferences menu which I'm going to do in a minute. But first there's the pause communications. This is the same thing as clicking this button right here. And it stops the Axe 8 from talking to 
Axe 8 edit program while you do things on the front panel of the Axe 8 or things like that. It puts it basically in sort of a sleep mode until you click back on that gray area and it'll come back. So that's how that works. If you've just uploaded a new firmware and you've been running Axe 8 edit, then this is something that you want to do to refresh it. Now, this is going to take a minute to do, but when I click this, what happens is you'll see at the bottom of the screen, and this usually happens when you first start up, it's got to go through and read all of the block definitions and make sure that they're current. And it'll take a little bit of time to do this, but it's a useful and important thing to do. I'm going to let it run here. I might chop it off for editing the video, but uh, it's got to sort of check everything and see, has anything changed between firmwares? Are there new amps? Did, is there a new kind of delay, for example, that we want to be able to edit and Axate edit? Next, under settings, there is the view. And this is great. You can make this a full size view, um, but you can also sort of shrink it. There's also a little tab down here that you can move up and down and make it smaller or bigger. So that's useful, part of my aquarium. So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, you can try normal size, full screen size, etc. All right, preferences is important. There are a couple different things here. First of all, if for some reason your Axe 8 edit doesn't seem to be talking to your Axe 8, you got to need to come here and check your ports, and it will tell you whether it's talking to it correctly or not. And it should say Axe 8 MIDI. I've got different different things here. So this it does connect automatically. You shouldn't have to manually do it, but this is a place you can do it if you want. I don't usually touch these MIDI settings, and these are just different options. I usually leave these alone. Now, there's a workspace option, and this is important, and we'll get to this in a minute about setting up your, fra your fractal directories and how those should, how you can organize your workspace. But this is where you can set up where you want Axe 8 to save things. Where do you want it to save your drive block library? Where do you want it to save your preset templates? Where do you want it to save your snapshots? This is the place where you can click it navigate and set it to always point to that directory. And I tend to like to use Dropbox myself because I can then use these on different computers. I can have my portable Mac with me when I'm out and about and everything's in there. And then I've got my, my regular workstation DAW uh, computer and they both use Dropbox and everything's in there. So when I do it in one, it, I, I get to use it on the other. So that's pretty helpful. Refresh is if you have been working on stuff and maybe the names aren't showing up right. You've been doing a whole bunch of preset names. If you click this, it'll go back and it'll reread all the preset names and refresh them so that when you go back in the system, you can look at it. If you've been loading and unloading cabs, this is also a place where that's really useful because you might say, hey, I moved something into that cab block, but it still looks like it's blank. If you do this and then go back, you will see that it is there what you moved there. And this block definitions is very similar to what we just did a minute ago on the um, firmware update. It'll just go back and refresh everything. Last, there's some options. Uh, you can decide what you like here. Um, you know, I usually don't need to do that. I, I usually make backups first. Um, this is, I, I tend to do this pretty regularly, so I leave that off, but you shouldn't do too many there. Um, so these are pretty good. You can probably leave this. It'll, it'll check automatically for a new version if you want here. And if you don't want that, you can click that off. Yeah.